Hello, David Snowpick here from Snowpick Games, and I've just finished week three of my crazy six-week project to fix up Retro Tank Party and release it on Steam. Retro Tank Party is an online two to four player multiplayer game built in Godot using the Nakama game server. This week I got sound and music into the game, and I redid the visual appearance of all of the UIs. But before I talk about it, let me just show you. The sound and music are all from free Creative Commons sources. The sound is from Phoenix1291 on Open Game Art, Nikron also on Open Game Art, and Kenny and L. I have sort of mixed feelings about the sound. It's good to have something in there. It really improves the feeling, and in some cases, immersion, insofar as a silly little game can be immersive. But sonically, all of the sounds kind of exist in the same part of the dynamic range, and it does end up sounding sort of muddy. I'd love to go through and EQ all of the sounds to make them more distinct and fit together better, but given the shortness of this project, there really isn't time, so these will have to do for now. The music is great. Uh, there's five tracks in total, the title music, the match setup music, and three gameplay tracks. It's also All Creative Commons by Birch on Open Game Art and Juhani Junkala. I'm a little worried that there's not enough of it, and it all kind of sounds pretty similar. Uh, but in any case, this music will have to do for now. I will add some more later, probably post-launch. The UI! Uh, most of the textures and icons are from free asset packs by Kenny and L. There's a lot of Kenny in this game. Uh, I ended up making two completely custom controls. Uh, this one I'm calling the option switcher, where you can go left and right to pick a particular option. Uh, it works really nice uh, from the keyboard and the controller as well as the mouse. And then what I'm calling the menu button, which is basically just a button with a sprite in front of it uh, that gets shown when you're hovering or uh, selecting via the, the keyboard or the controller. The rest are just standard Godot controls, themed to look the way they do now, and I'm feeling pretty good about the UI theme. It's not perfect, but it fits the visual style of the game, it's a bit retro, and it's way less embarrassing to show the game to people now. Oh, and there's a Godot splash screen at the beginning, which I got from Sworn Development on itch.io. On Friday, we did another game dev live stream. It was a super fun one. We had a couple good matches playtesting with the folks on stream. Uh, we worked on experimenting with adding modding to the game, and it went really well. I think we validated the low-level technical way in which mods will be loaded and how new things will be picked up by the game. There's still a lot of things to do, though, uh, before modding can really be put into the game, and it's likely that that'll have to come after the Steam release. So what's up next? Well, I'm not going to be doing that much this week, because uh, I'm going to be going to visit my folks. I haven't seen them in about a year, uh, because my ma is kind of high risk, so we took quarantining very seriously, but they just got their second coronavirus vaccine about two weeks ago, so me and the kids are going to go visit. But the things I want to work on next is implementing a password reset and migrating the Nakama instance I've been running on a $10 a month Linode <laughs> to a little bit better uh, server environment. And that's it. That's all I have time for this week. Uh, and maybe I won't even get that in because uh, I have you know, this trip. Anyway, we're about halfway through the project. Three of the six weeks are done and the game is looking pretty good. The only other critical thing that I have to add is more maps to battle on and everything else is just bug fixes and gravy, whatever other things we can squeeze in before release. So yeah, thanks for watching. Take care. I'll talk to you next time.